Hi everybody, welcome to Brickball. My name is Jack and today is another LEGO Weekly News Update. Let's start off by checking out all of the new sets that were revealed this week. It is Hulk versus Red Hulk. They come as the two big figs and the minifigs are actually She-Hulk versus Red She-Hulk. The Hulk big fig has some slightly different printing, so technically he is exclusive. And of course the Red Hulk big fig is exclusive as well as the two She-Hulks. At 375 pieces and an expected retail price of $60, it seems a little bit high, but considering it has four exclusive characters, and three of which have never even been made in LEGO before, I feel like that is why the price was ultimately justified. The vehicles themselves definitely seem all about the play features, and we can expect to see this set as well as many others at San Diego Comic Con in a couple of weeks from now. Obviously Mighty Micros would be there as well. We covered that last week. And this is also another small reveal. There is a picture of the Sonic the Hedgehog minifigure, and I believe these pictures came from Mark Warburton at TT Games. He is just one of several new Dimensions characters to be released for the next wave, but based on public reactions, he seems like one of the more headlining characters of the new wave. Also, the last reveal for any new kind of set or minifig for this week comes in the form of what looks like a chocolate cupcake, and this is Birthday Buddy set number 40226. This this looks like a fun little build, definitely a great little gift to give someone for their birthday. But I gotta say that sausage party trailer really left a bad taste in my mouth now when I see anthropomorphic food. I have a feeling I might be picking up several of these just to have in the uh, back pocket in case there's a friend's birthday that I forget about. But there's actually a lot of really cool new stuff going on in the world of LEGO this week. Uh, namely, the brand new headquarters of Billund has been designed and they came out with this really awesome video. They also have offices in the USA, the UK, China, and Singapore, but Billund Denmark has always and always will be their headquarters. And when you see what they're planning on doing for all these awesome facilities, it's gonna be a lot easier for me to justify a trip to Europe. In total, it's gonna be 52,000 square meters. For those of us on the Imperial system, that is more than 500 in 50,000 square feet. This is gonna be massive. I'm only showing you a portion of their design video right now, but I really get the impression that the new LEGO headquarters is gonna be competing with companies like Google. It looks modern, stylish, inviting, and most importantly, it looks like a lot of fun to be there. Matthew from the Brickset.com has posted an article that outlines a lot more information about this, and I highly recommend that you check it out. Also on this link, you can find the full version of the video that I'm showing you. So those are building plans for LEGO, but this week there was also some real building that happened, and that was in Legoland in California for their new York City. A 26 foot tall addition to be exact, this is the new One World Trade Center. This thing weighs a lot, it's made with a ton of Lego, and it is officially the largest Lego build in the United States right now. Here's an interesting story, it's actually a NASA update. On July 4th, the space probe Juno entered the orbit of Jupiter. It's been traveling there for about five years now, and will orbit Jupiter nearly 40 times before it burns up in the atmosphere. And in that time, it's gonna be sending a lot of interesting data about the planet, back to us. And why on earth am I telling you all of this in a LEGO Weekly News update? Well, that is because on board that probe are three aluminum LEGO minifigures. We've got the god Jupiter, his wife Juno, and a minifigure for Galileo. So it's just comforting to know that the probe and its minifigures have reached their final destination, and I think officially these are the most valuable LEGO minifigures to date. At least they are for now until February of 2018 when they burn up in the atmosphere. Also, in an article from Variety, we get yet another LEGO sequel movie update. The release date was pushed back till February 2019, and now the update is that the entire script is actually getting rewritten. It was originally written by Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, who directed the first movie, but now the rewrite will be done by Ralph Bob Waxberg. Until recently, he's only worked on TV shows, and he's the guy that created BoJack Horseman. But anyways, that is the update with the movie. It is getting rewritten currently. And while I'm on the subject of LEGO in the media, the Netflix exclusive Bionicle series, if you are a fan, will debut its final set of episodes on July 29th. Can't say I ever watched the show, but I don't know how well it is doing considering this is its final set of episodes. All right, let's jump right into LEGO Ideas now. If you do not know what LEGO Ideas is, it's a website in which you submit your own LEGO creations in hopes to having it become an official LEGO set. This week, there were no new sets that got 10,000 votes, which means no new sets are in the review stage. So instead, let's focus on an upcoming LEGO Ideas set. Today we're going to take a look at a LEGO set that kind of hits close to home. This is an In-N-Out Burger restaurant by Furmania. 
For those that don't know this burger joint, it is a very high quality fast food burger joint that can really only be found on the west coast of the states. The bias is strong in my opinion, but I do believe this is one of the best burger joints out there. And the builder managed to get the style of this structure looking really, really nice. A lot of the interior and exterior of these places are very reminiscent of what a 1950s burger or diner might look like, and that's because the style hasn't really changed that much since this became a chain. Anyways, the details in this build are just excellent inside and out. I really like those crisscross palm trees, and I really hope this becomes a set or at least I can get the building instructions. All right, and it is always easy to segue straight from the Lego Ideas segment into the custom creation section, and this is basically where I get to talk about and show you guys some of the awesome custom creations that I happen to see throughout the week. First build up is titled Purple Pharmacist by Duncan Atkins. It's a very high quality modular city build with a nice incorporation of a vibrant color that we don't normally see, at least in stylish buildings like this. Inside you can see the pharmacy is pretty well stocked, but we don't get an idea of what the second or third floor looks like. This build is very elegant and stylish, yet there isn't too much happening on the outside that makes it feel cartoony. Now I like Batman. I'd say I like Batman more than the average person likes Batman, but I am not Paul Hetherington, otherwise known as the Brick Baron. This is yet another massive Batman diorama from this builder, and it is nothing short of incredible. The battle itself takes place with Joker's decked out tram car with a giant colorful cannon on top. I think he's shooting laughing gas bombs and all the police are losing their minds on the street. Robin seems to be flying the Batcopter in with Batman hanging below, and the stage is set for what looks like a pretty epic battle. But oh my gosh, look at the theater itself. It is built immaculately. There's a bunch of incredible detailing on the outside. And heck, even when you look above and we see the silhouetted skyline, that looks great. And we have one epic Batman build at the top. Heck, even the base of the structure is extremely ornate. I know we have a custom Batman minifigure display with our collection, but that pales in comparison to how epically awesome this build is. Oh yeah, I think I'm getting carried away, but he also has a video of a bit of these pieces actually having some movement. I believe the train car, cannon, and helicopter move around. I will leave links for his video as well as his Flickr. I suggest you check both of those out and let's move on. This next build is called Needle Mouth by George. And this is yet another incredibly expressive Lego character from this builder. And after seeing this guy's builds, it really expanded the limits of what I thought people were able to create, at least in terms of an animated and organic looking creature. This latest creature takes on the shape of some sort of deep sea fish, and this is certainly a creator I would not want to run into on a dive. This next build by Timothy Jones features a lot of nice little vignettes from medieval lifestyle. We've got some nice scenes at the dock, and you can even see some interior shots of a kitchen and even a composer. And in the back, there's a lovely area for a forest or a small wooden area, and wait a second, what's that? Why is that guy running to light the emergency tower? Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This is an incredible build. The title of this massive scene of destruction is called Sea Serpent's Wake. Amidst this really nice build for a castle, we have this great, absolutely terrifying scene of a massive sea serpent just wreaking havoc on the coastline. Not only is the creature built wonderfully, but this is just such a complete scene. This is truly a build that you could walk around for quite a while and keep on noticing new details. And what is a custom creation segment if there isn't at least one spaceship included? Here we have Michael Kosmierksok's Hercules. I believe this is a big military carrier, so this is uh, nowhere near minifig scale, I'm to assume. This ship is a great combination of shapes, and it's got just the right amount of color. The main eye-catching bit of the ship for me, though, is definitely that sort of crack that goes through the center. It's apparent that this is, of course, an intentional design feature of the ship, but it just looks wonderful, especially seeing all of that very intricate internal detailing underneath. And I feel like within the universe, of the ship this could very well be some sort of morphing function. And by mere artifact that I'm trying to make up scenarios about how the ship might work in its own creator's universe just proves to show how much this particular design speaks to me. All right, that is it for this episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Remember to tune in same time next week for another LEGO Weekly News update. And if you want to learn anything more about the stuff I was talking about in this episode, I've left links in the video description below for all of the articles. So once again, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time at Brick Ball.